Good morning, everybody. Gee whiz, I don't even know what day it is. What's important is growing, maturing to step two or level two on these three words, faith in, hope, and greatest. And what you hear is the groundskeepers for Grand Canyon University going by on their mowers or, or their vehicles. Cushman Eagle Motors. That's from the 50s. Okay, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. I believe that's where I want to go. Let me turn there. Yes, it is. And we're going to start verse 10, 1310 of 1 Corinthians. What am I am trying to do? 1 Corinthians opens up, Paul says, I couldn't teach you as spiritual, and that's a level two, mature, but I taught you as babes on the milk of the word because there was envy, strife, and division among you. So I'm, there's even steps or levels of ascent when you chant different psalms uh, in the Old Testament, levels of ascent. And uh, so I'm trying to get you to ascend regularly reading the Bible every day, even if it's for five minutes during lunch hour, uh, or 15 minutes preferably. But it starts with reading, including prayer, and then learning Christ and learning how to study the Word of God. Most Christians don't know how to study the Word of God. Most Christians don't read daily, seven days a week, until they become number eight, new beginnings. All right? There were eight human beings on the ark, four men and four women, their wives. Now, verse 10, 1310 of 1 Corinthians. But when that which is perfect is come, there was only one perfect human being on earth because God was in him. The power, the authority, the Holy Spirit was in him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The man, the mediator between God and humanity, his creation. The man, the Lord Christ Jesus, is the mediator. And he's a mediator and God is one. Even though a mediator does not mediate one, he mediates two. He's in between the first and the creation. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. That's child four times for locked in major doctrine. But I'm trying to get you to level two, step two, and maturing, growing in the Holy Spirit truth. But when I became a man, son, placed, mature. That's what Ephesians 1.5 is about. It's not adoption. The two Greek words there a placing a son, mature and responsible. He's bar mitzvah, responsible for his own sins. But when I became a man, son placed, I put away childish things, and I grew. I got off the milk of the word and got on to spiritual principles, growth in the spirit. Verse 12, for now we see and it's not through a glass, it's into a mirror darkly. It's a clouded mirror. It's not quite clear because you're still growing, getting off the milk onto the meat of the word. 
and it's a reflection of yourself in the mirror. You go away and forget what you saw in the mirror, a reflection of yourself. So it's into a mirror darkly, not through a glass, is what the Greek says. But when face to face, the Lord prayed to the Father, said, Father, all those that you've given me might be with me where I am and behold my glory face to face. The Lord chose all his apostles from the disciples, beloved believer disciples, his 12 apostles face to face, including Paul in the Arabian desert. The Lord came back in his glorified body and chose Paul face to face and taught him face to face by revelation of the Spirit. For now we see into a mirror darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. God knows your name. You are known of God when you are in the book of life. Okay, verse 13. And this is what I was shining on the floor when the teaching started. And now abide faith and it's not faith alone anymore. When you get to level two, step two, it's faith in Christ. And the scripture says, Paul said, all men do not have faith. I have a friend who claims himself an anthropologist. He cannot think of anything outside of natural humanity. He cannot think spiritual. He cannot think faith in Christ, anointing. That's seven minutes. We'll get out here. We're on the ending verse. 13.13 13 of 1 Corinthians. But now abideth faith in Christ, hope, Colossians 1.27. Please read that carefully. Look for the word glory. What is your hope? All right. has to do with faith in Christ, the anointing, Christ, the title, and the glory, the bright light, the glory. The light that is good, truth, life. And then charity, love. And this is agape, love, truth. You cannot have the agape love of God without the truth of God. All right? These two steps and even a third level, because there's a third heaven. Scripture says so. A man caught away to the third heaven and heard and saw things that's unlawful for man to utter or speak. So we've got level two, a spiritual level, mature, grown up, all right? Faith in Christ, anointing. We've got a level two, and then we've got level three or step three, heavenly glory. New heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. I make all things new. And the new Jerusalem was coming down out of the third heaven, out of the spiritual, out of heaven. These, step two, step three, level three, but the greatest of all these is charity, love, agape, truth. That's a five star or five arrow. Shua, I'll leave you with this. The, the meaning of the last half of the name Yahshua or Yehoshua. Shua means five things. Salvation, Redeemer, Deliverer, Reconciler, Unto Glory. Faith in Christ. Hope, Colossians 1.27, and love, agape love truth. And how do you love your enemy? I just learned that one this Sunday. I've asked that question for 50 years. How do you love your enemy? If he's thirsty, give him water. If he needs some food, give him food. Don't let him live in the middle of your camp. But how do you love your enemy? You speak God's truth to your enemy. He's still your enemy. Consider him your enemy, but you love him by speaking God's truth principles to your enemy. Love you. Bernard Eugene Beringer, Jr., 
with a spiritual teaching. Bye.